So um, if you and, and Robin, can you can you can actually ask questions, what, whatever you want. OK, um, as I'm going. All right. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Let me go ahead and um, get started here. Um, you're able to see this, Robin? The initially I was. Oh, there's Kayla. See. Let's admit Kayla. Kayla, you there with us? Yep, I'm here. All right, all right, Kayla. Um, you haven't missed anything yet. Um, uh, my, me and uh, Robin were kind of uh, talking um, with each other. Um, um, Robin, um, before we um, get started, um, wh were there um, are what um, how how far have you gotten um, in terms of your um, you know um, in your journey for um, dissertation courses, things like that? Um. Let's see. Uh, I haven't. I, I've not that far in. Mm -hmm. I'm not that far in. Um, mm -hmm. I came in because I have my maps. My master's is in um, in public health, so I was you know. Oh, oh, you have a straight. master's in public health. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have from a master's um, from Liberty. Hmm. I've Liberty. heard of Liberty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I um special my uh, master's in is, is in public health and health promotion. Hmm. So yeah, it's it it helps me kind of ease into this program mm -hmm. seamlessly, mm -hmm. actually. So right, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great. Um, so this is kind of your you're in kind of in the early phases. Mm-hmm. Um, and and what what occupation are you in? Uh, are you working in public health right now? Yeah, I am. How about you, Kayla? I know I I had a baby about nine months ago, so I stay home with my baby. Oh, congratulations! Thank mm -hmm. you. Congratulations. All right. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I, I already um, I started hit the record button. Um, Kayla, is this all right if um, th this is recorded? Yep. All right, all right. Um, so this is, um, you know, the the research, and you probably got an opportunity to kind of um, take a look at this. Um, the the research um, that that we're we're going to be working on is called food insecurity increases cardiovascular mortality. Um, risk among Latino Americans um, with arthritis. Um, and, and my aim here is to kind of um, uh, uh, dissect this and um, piece together, um, you know, what is going to be, um, uh, what is going to be the research um, that we're going to be going over. So uh, at, at this point, we'll start um, with um, going over some of the basic statistical tests, you know, I, and I'm not going to go into like a very um, detailed, um, uh, de detailed, um, uh, uh, and, you know, provide too many elaborate details on this. Um, just just kind of an um, overview of this. Um, and then research questions, providing alternate ways of presenting. Um, and then introduce um, some data sets and and um, uh, Robin and I were, were um, talking about some of the um, research ideas that um, she's going to be working on. So what are the research questions um, that, that we're looking at? Um, do do either one of you have um, any um, way that you have any place that you have um, written research questions yet? Or um, is this too early for you for both of you? Actually, during my oh, go ahead. I'm actually getting ready to start the capstone phase next quarter. I'm in seminar five right oh, now. Oh, you are. So I've done my mm -hmm. prospectus. Um, oh, and submitted that, and so mm -hmm. that you know, I'm waiting to be assigned my committee. Right, right. All right. Um, thank you, Kayla. Um, and then um, um. Did, did you have any um, uh, experience or um, have, have you done research questions, Robin? Or I, I know you said you were kind of early. Yeah, I, well, I'm actually mm -hmm. with my work, I'm, I am um, working with 
the my health department and the health mm-hmm. foundation, mm-hmm. and I'm working with an evaluation mm-hmm. team, and mm-hmm. um, a lot of the um, research and evaluation, I I have mm-hmm. a, a part in contributing to a lot of it. So I have some experience. Great, great. Um, so these are the research questions that we're looking at. And and I mean, um, w- what is interesting is that um, the abstract is a very condensed way to present um, uh, all of your research questions in a way that, you know, people understand. And the process here was that um, I submitted an abstract, right? Um, and and kind of summarize the research that um, we're going to be um, enhancing in a poster. And so I, I had to kind of, um, you know, do the initial work. Um, and, and the way abstracts work is that you submit this um, to a conference, and this is a premier conference in epidemiology, Society of Epidemiological Research. And so what I did is I submitted this around um, January or February. Um, and then once this was submitted, um, uh, and this was a lead breaker abstract. And the the difference between regular um, abstract submission and lead breaking um, abstract submission is that in regular um, submission, you're kind of um, uh, uh, turning in things that are, you know, that, that are um, um, very common sort of ideas, things like that. In lead breaker abstract, um, what you're doing is um, presenting the same abstract. However, they will not accept as many as they do um, in the regular period. Um, so that is um, what you're going over, and um, uh, that is how the submission process works. Um, and and a lot of people, w- w- even you know, when they're graduating, a lot of times don't have this experience um, to be able to um, conduct research um, and and you know, um, submitting their research into conferences. Um, so this is a unique opportunity, and I'm, I'm very happy that um, you know you showed interest and. In, um, there are a lot of students, and and um, uh, I'm 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 really happy that that you're um, doing this. Um, so the first question again, um, and I'm I'm gonna kind of um, uh, circle the independent variable and dependent variables. So arthritis, um, can can you tell? Um, I don't know um, either Robin or or maybe um, Kayla, since um, you know Kayla, you're um, you know kind of um, more advanced in not advanced um you know later on in the um drph curriculum um either one um do you know um how to determine um independent variables and dependent variables well that's the dependent variable arthritis because it's not changing well Mm -hmm. i mean it's Mm -hmm. not changing um you know they're every person's going to have arthritis <clears throat> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so um, that's a um, you know that that's a great answer, Kayla, and um, that you know um, uh, m- m- many people might say that um, the 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 um, how questions are organized is very important. Um, this is a research question, and when you're um, both of you, when you're going to be working on your capstone, um, you're going to have to kind of construct these research questions. Well, the right answer is actually, and and you know, um, Kayla, thank you for you know volunteering. The right answer is that um, arthritis is actually an independent variable, and the way you can tell that is when you're constructing a research question, the first variable that you mention has to always be the independent variable. Um, if you put a dependent variable here, then the whole research question is um, incorrect. Um, so uh, you know, that's a learning moment. Um, so um, with that said, cardiovascular mortality then um, is independent or dependent. Hmm, okay. What do you think? Um, is it um, is um, mortality um, independent or dependent? The mo- you said mortality. Oh, the cardiovascular mortality. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. That would be the uh, dependent? Correct, yes. Um, So we determined that this was um, independent variable, and so this has to be dependent variable. Um, So this is the connection that we're after. We're we're trying to see, um, is there a connection between um, arthritis and cardiovascular mortality? Now, we're not looking at the general population. 
um, we're solely looking at Latino Americans. Um, so these are your, you already know what your research will entail um, because you know this research research question. And then um, once you do that, um, then you can construct your, um, you know, your equation or, or your variable um, that you're looking at. And then I'm going to get into the statistical test that is in here. Now, um, controlling for, this is very important. A lot of students, when they're in the prospectus phase, they'll just, um, uh, you know, ask the question, is there an association between arthritis and cardiovascular mortality? And that's all. They'll just say that. Um, they don't control for anything. So what do I mean by controlling for? Um, the idea is that um, there's a relationship between arthritis and cardiovascular mortality. However, is that association due to only age? Um, is that due to gender because um, one group had a higher gender and um, one group is more likely to experience um, cardiovascular mortality? Um, what, what are some of the health variables that you have to control for? So you have to control for age, gender, socioeconomic status, and um, most of the research questions you do that. And then the um, health variables that you want to always, because this is arthritis is very much connected with obesity. So you can make the argument that arthritis is really not the cardio causing cardiovascular mortality. Um, this is an underlying obesity um, that is actually affecting the connection and um, uh, leading to cardiovascular mortality. Because as you know, these are some risk factors for cardiovascular mortality um, uh, um, that are there. So, so um, those, it, mm -hmm, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Those be confounding variables? Right, right. Um, th that is the same thing as saying, you know, confounding variables. However, when you're writing it in the construct of a research question, um, then you want to make sure that you use the word uh, controlling. You don't want to use the word, you know, confounding. However, um, uh, uh, Kayla, you're correct that um, these are confounders. So thank you for that. Um, so um, again, our sample sampling frame, they, they call it sampling frame, um, is not the general population. We're not looking at all the people in the United States. We're only looking at Latino Americans. And so this is important to keep in mind when you're posing these questions because um, you want to make sure that your question is, is as accurate as possible. So th this is what I want to kind of teach you through this, um, how these research questions are constructed. Um, and usually you have two or three research questions that you're trying to address throughout the um, dissertation. And when you do that, um, you know, I have two research questions here. And when you do that, that's um, basically um, something that you can write in a, um, a doctoral capstone. Um, so you're you're ahead of uh, you're ahead of the game here because um, you're already studying this and um, kind of understanding how this works. So how does how is food insecurity um, involved in all of this? I mean, we know that you know we're already asking the question arthritis and cardiovascular mortality. What do I mean by food insecurity modifies the association? Um, so this this is um, you know more difficult question. I'm not gonna you know I don't think that um, you might have. Um, studied this, and, and because this is something that um, one, if you're my student, um, you, you go through this, um, and, and many of my graduates have actually used this um, modified. Um, so I'm going to show you um, effect modification. And uh, I mean, if you don't um, get this, um, you know, this time, then you can maybe watch the um, video or um, just, you know, just you can listen along. Um, and I'm going to draw this in the next. Um, because we're kind of running out of room here. Um, so arthritis, right? We were talking about arthritis and uh, cardiovascular mortality. So arthritis, cardiovascular mortality, we're already um, looking into the relationship, right? Um, so now what we're looking at is does um, food insecurity, when you have food insecurity, I mean, th this is a very important concept. Um, if you haven't, you know, um, studied about food insecurity, I have quite a few articles. If you look at Google Scholar and type my name in, um, I have quite a few articles about food insecurity. And uh, listen, you know, food insecurity is something that is connected to um, hunger. 
And so hunger really disrupts the food patterns. Uh, a lot of people, um, when they're um, uh, using, um, you know, um, supplemental uh, SNAP benefits, then a lot of times what happens is that um, in the in the beginning of the month, um, and um, if you if you've had um, SNAP benefits, um, I've been, um, I've had them, and so I, I know kind of the pattern in the beginning of the month when you um, actually have a lot of um, SNAP. Um, there, then um, you start using that um, initially because, um, and, and sometimes these are unhealthy food, and by the end of the month, um, you've run out of um, uh, run out of SNAP benefits, and so now um, you're having to kind of scrounge for food that um, was already, and a lot of times when you visit food banks, they're high carbohydrate, um, uh, carbohydrate dense nutrient, low nutrients, these are the things that you are kind of considering in food insecurity, um, and and there's actually um, four levels of food insecurity that um, I might, you know, I probably will get to. Um, so arthritis um, is connected to cardiovascular mortality, and and so we we kind of um, you know um, establish that, and then the question is when you have food insecurity and arthritis. Does that cause a higher level of cardiovascular mortality, um, uh, or um, is there no effect? Um, so um, the question is, if you have arthritis alone, right, and then if you have food insecurity alone, um, there there's a certain um, uh, hazard or um, certain um, uh, uh, so a certain connection. Uh, between arthritis and um, CVD mortality. However, what happens when you have both? Um, is there a higher risk of mortality or no? Um, so that's the second research question here, and I hope this has provided you, you know, with some insight as to um, how this works. So let's, um, th this is a little review. I mean, um, what happens is when you go into the courses, you remember all the statistical tests that you have to use and the types of variables that you have to use. Um, however, um, we we tend to you know forget that um, how to apply this and how this is used. So, I, if you have taken a statistical um, course, um, you know the um, four levels of measurement. That's um, nominal, ordinal, interval ratio. And just to make this simple, what I'm going to tell you is that nominal is always categorical. Um, we're going to skip um, ordinal because there's controversy as to um, if it is a continuous variable or a categorical variable. Um, and then uh, interval ratio, these are always continuous variables. Um, so if you look in SPSS, I'm not sure you know if either one of you had some um, had a chance to look in SPSS. Um, when you when you look at SPSS, what they will say is the um, continuous variable is scale, um, and then um, if you have a nominal uh, categorical variable, um, they'll they'll call it nominal. Um, um, so you have to know. Um, let's take a look at these research questions and take a look if there's any um, continuous variables um, that we have to look at. And the answer is no, because um, when you're looking at these variables, you're actually looking at the um, variables in a cate categorical means. Another uh, another tip that I want to share with you is that when you have um, continuous variables in the social sciences and public health, you want to dichotomize um, that continuous variable. And let's give you um, let me give you kind of a situation where you would have to do so. Um, oh, age is actually here. Um, age is continuous or categorical? Typical. Categorical. Sorry, continuous or did you say categorical? Yeah, categorical. Categorical. Um, you know, great, great guess, Kayla. Um, the, the um, what, what, it, what this is. So, um, you know, um, the answer is actually could be categorical, could be continuous. So age can be all across the board. I mean, um, you can have a baby that's you know age one. Um, you can have somebody that's um, senior citizen um, in their um, you know in their seventies or um, uh, what, whatnot. So um, th these are these are some ways that you can have a um, continuous variable. However, when you have age groups, for instance, um, eighteen to twenty four. Um, 25 to, you know, 34. Um, when you have these ranges, then, um, Caleb, what you said is correct. Um, then this is a categorical variable. Um, 
now when I said um, uh, dichotomize the variable, you want to take that continuous variable and and cut this um, either you know in the 50th percentile or I've I've done that as well. Um, I, I, one of my most recent papers I, I worked with um, I, I worked on with collaborators um, actually looked at dichotomizing C-reactive protein. Um, that's an inflammatory biomarker. Um, so that was that was kind of a review, um, continuous versus categorical. Um, Cox regression is the technique that is being used. Um, you, you may ask that what is the difference between Cox regression and logistic regression? Because, you know, um, I, I don't think there's many courses that actually go through Cox regression. Um, so the idea is that you ha you follow people, you you look at people that have um, that have had um, arthritis, right? Um, you you take a look at people that have had arthritis and then you follow them um, for, you know, um, how many ever years, um, about nine years or so, um, and then take a look at how many people are going through cardiovascular disease mortality in about, you know, nine years or so. Um, so you're following these people, the same people from the beginning to the end. Um, and um, when you do so, you're seeing what the impact is um, on the heart. So here I wanted to kind of introduce you to some of these, um, uh, some of the data sets that are available out there. Um, I've used and my students have used um, NHIS um, maps. I haven't really used um, with my students. Um, this is I have um, uh, about a um, more than a decade of experience in terms of um, using NHANES. Um, BRFS, BRFSS is something I've used in my research if you want to go to research gate, research gate. Um, and then SEER, HCUP, CDC Wonder, YRBSS, um, DHS, and all of us research. So as you're exploring and as you're trying to look at what types of um, ideas that you want to, um, you know, you want to create into a dissertation and what are some of your interests, then what you can do is um, look at these um, variables and um, there is actually a um, wonderful um, data set that um, is out there um, and a database um, that's called IPUMP. So you can actually um, Google this and um, take a look at this. Um, some of my students, I ha I've asked them um, uh, to go into IPUMPs and see what variables there are. Um, one of my current student students is actually using uh, the, the demographic health survey. And why, why did I give you all of these um, secondary data analysis variables? Um, because um, this is something that, um, you know, I, I encourage you to look at because um, when you're um, in um, the DRPH program, you want to be working on secondary data more so than you want to look at primary data. Um, although I'm not sure, um, I think there might be um, some provision for primary data collection. However, you know, you don't want to um, be labor and and kind of um, keep doing this until you know um, years have passed by and um, you know you you haven't gotten um, your research done. So again, um, keep keep the aim in mind. You want to graduate, graduate, graduate. Um, you, you don't want to be in the dissertation phase for a long time, and you know um, you you want to make sure that um, you get to the end. Um, so, Dr. Uh, Energy, already, excuse go me. Ahead, go ahead. I have mm -hmm. to um, hop on to another meeting for work. Um, thank you for putting this together. I'll look out mm -hmm. for the um, the link recording. to watch. Yeah, the recording, so I can watch it later when you're done. All right. All right. Well, okay. Thank um, you. It was great uh, talking to you, Robin. Yes, I'll be in touch. Please mm -hmm. let me know right. um, if thank anything you. is needed. Mm -hmm. Y'all have a good All day. Right. You as well. You as bye bye. Well. Mm, bye bye. So Kayla, um, I'm I'm just um, you know gonna go over this and um, uh, have this recording as well. Um, and, and you know, um, um, let me know if you have some questions as I'm uh, moving along. Um, so um, you know, um, in the initial analysis, um, I found that um, there were 10.4 years of um, of um, uh, looking forward. Um, so this is 10.4 years, um, and then your um, outcome variable is CVD mortality, um, and then um, what you're looking at as um, your uh, independent variable is arthritis. 
Oh, we're we're actually almost to the end. Um, so six point five percent among males had percent more. Um, uh, were were um, you know um, um, uh, died from cardiovascular mortality, and then um, eleven eleven point eight um, uh, percent among females. So um, the female mortality was actually higher than males when we we're talking about mortality coming from arthritis. So Is the assignment, um, you. Um, all of you are. Hmm, go ahead. Um, on the last slide, is that without accounting for or modifying for food insecurity? Is that just like arthritis to cardiovascular disease mortality? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. Um, th this is just looking at arthritis to cardiovascular disease mortality, not looking at food insecurity. Okay. Um, um, yeah, those percentages are. are so. Yeah, great question, Kayla. Thank you. So the assignment, what is the assignment? Um, well, the assignment is you want to select three articles, right, um, for the annotated bibliography. Um, and, you know, food insecurity is, is something new um, to a lot of people. Um, so if you can um, find some articles with food insecurity, um, that would be great. Um, if you look at arthritis, this is, again, another um, idea that is very, very common um, uh, yet you know, not much is known about this. Um, and then if you want to, you know, know about the CBD mortality, perhaps the risk factors that are involved in this, um, then you can kind of uh, select three articles from there. So there's a lot of provision um, to um, create these articles. And, and the idea is that I want to, um, you know, we, we want to kind of um, uh, synthesize all of these together um, so that we can um, put these all together and have a poster. And typically a poster, um, you have one column here where you have the intro um, and then, um, you know, kind of um, maybe a graphic here. Um, and this is where a lot of um, provision is um, there for kind of um, providing a synthesis. Um, and then the methods go here. Um, and other under that, um, you can kind of uh, take a look at and uh, place some variables here. Um, and this might be something interesting for some some of you, um, those watching this recording, and um, uh, Kayla as well. Um, so methods are there, and then um, results uh, typically starts here, and then um, you continue on the results um, onto this side, and then um, typically uh, the conclusion is right here. Um, so th this is a very collaborative effort. Um, and unfortunately, um, our um, NIH collaborator, um, Dr. Um, uh, Bedoun, um, was not able to uh, make it. And um, you know, um, there, there's a lot of collaborators, and so we're we're working together to um, get this and um, uh, going. And this is uh, you know a great opportunity for um, kind of. Um, understanding the scope of research, understanding how this works. And uh, like I showed you, um, this will really help you um, in the capstone. Um, so that that concludes the presentation. I, I had some more slides here. Um, these are all, if you just a um, little um, plug for my um, uh, uh, monthly um, teaching session. If you um, want to attend, usually um, it is the first or second Tuesday of the month. And um, so you can come and learn more about the um, great world of um, statistics. So um, that kind of wraps up everything. Um, uh, Kayla, did you um, have any questions at the end? Or? I don't think so. All right. All right. Um, well, um, Kayla, thank you for um, uh, joining and um, th thanks um, all of you who are um, uh, viewing this recording. Um.